our resource person, Dr. Ozoy Kumar Chauhan, will definitely explain to our uh, this is, uh, this is of data collection and data analysis and how uh, 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 data collection and data, and data, what methodology should be adopted and how the, uh, the data should be uh, analyzed critically to get uh, to, 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 to arrive at a conclusion uh, of any social science research. Uh, I, uh, I hope this would be a, uh, our, our, our one week workshop would be a grand success. I would like to welcome Dr. Ajoy Kumar Chauhan and all the faculty members, young researchers and, uh, and students who have participated in the one week uh, workshop on data analysis in social science research. Uh, I again welcome you all and hope it will be a great success. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for your words and time. Uh, now, I would like to introduce today's resource person, Dr. Ajoy Kumar Shohan. Dr. Ajoy Kumar Shohan is the founder of Research Siksa, is a consultant of data analysis and data science and analysis. He is the trainer of big data analytics and uh, machine, uh, machine learning using R. His area of expertise are financial engineering, financial econometrics, financial derivatives and risk management, data analysis through different statistical and econometric softwares like SPSS, eViews. Sir has completed his PhD from Komon University, Nanital. He did his MBA from the same university. He did MSc in mathematics, taking statistics as his special subject. He did his BSc in electronics. Sir has lots of publications in different national and international reputed journals. He has got more than 90 citations from around the world. He has got four ACE index, three item index. And Sir has 20 years of experience in academics and in, in industry. Sir has organized more than 500 workshops around, uh, around India and mainly on data analysis through different statistical softwares. Sir, we are very happy and lucky enough to have a resource person like you. Hope your interaction, your deliberation, interaction with the participants, their active participation will definitely provide justice to this session and in the coming days. Thank you, sir. Once again, I welcome you on behalf of the organizing committee. Now I would like to hand over this session to you. Now the session is yours, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, good morning to everybody and uh, the participants. The agenda, of, as mentioned in the brochure, is that today I am going to introduce you the software SPSS and how to do the basic analysis in the software. So I'm just going to start the session. And uh, before session, I, will, I would like to say uh, something on the academics, that uh, what is the future of academics and uh, why research is important. Actually, I joined academics in around 2000, 20 years back. And uh, at that time, uh, I did not do my PhD. And slowly and slowly, uh, everybody starts saying that from where you are doing your PhD and why not you are completing your PhD. So I learned this, that without PhD, there is no survival in the education sector. So I did my PhD. And uh, second thing that we uh, nowadays, uh, Every university is appointing on the basis of publication. And uh, even if you want to complete complete your PhD, you have some mandatory publication is there. Depends upon the university. Some universities say that you must have three publications. Some universities say that you have two publications. But uh, uh, the requirement is going to be stringent. 
slowly and slowly and uh, what new thing is coming whenever you apply your apply for a post in any college so uh, they will ask that uh, how many publications you have in scopus how many publications you have in sci or how many publication you have in abdc so this is a new trend and uh, the education sector is uh, going to be very competitive and uh, a lot of phd are phds are coming daily and um, in india approximately you can imagine that more than 10000 or 5000 phds uh, have got their degree on every year and uh, competition is there so uh, what is what to do with uh, to face this competition the only thing is that the good publications and uh, the citations will save your life in the next 5 years in the next 5 years i can tell you uh, anybody who is having the good citations good publications and uh, the publications which are uh, which are followed by all others will help you in your career i have conducted more than 1000 workshops all over india and uh, so th this is the mission of my firm also to provide you the research knowledge in every aspect today the topic given to me are the uh, introduct introduction of the research using the spss spss is one of the oldest software uh in research because before spss uh, all manually calculations were done by the researchers but but now now spss make all the calculation very easy so uh, i just going to start the fdp with the spss and all the theoretical concept i will explain along with that so this is the agenda that uh, i am going to follow and uh, let me open the spss first and let me introduce the basic features of uh, the software <clears throat> so the software is going to open and now i am going to share the uh, screen of the software okay uh, software is this is the software i hope you can uh, see the software yes sir uh, it is visible to yeah. all sir yeah sir i request you to please open the i think chat box is open yeah good yes sir it, so it, chat box is open uh, so that if anybody want to ask something or want to comment so i can see good okay, no now um, this is the front page of the software and uh, you can see in the bottom that there are two options one option is called variable option and the second option is called data option so uh, first of all we need to understand that what is the variable how many types of variables we can define in spss and what is the procedure of defining that so uh, uh, you can see in the bottom we are having the two options data view and the variable view first of all i should go to the variable view and in variable if if i click on the variable view you can see that uh, this is the different columns on the page name column type column width column decimal column level column so we are having a lot of columns some columns are not very important but some columns are very important so we have to understand the importance of all these columns and in the first uh, uh, row you can see that in the top we are having some options like file edit view data transform analyze graphs utilities so these are the these are some of the uh, commands options that software is providing to us and the analyze command is very important command here if you click on the analyze you can see that we can uh, apply these techniques which are available in the software 
like regression we can apply descriptive statistics we can apply which i will cover today so this is the basic page of the software now how to define the variables so here the first type of variable so i will theory explain here also and the first type of variables is known as qualitative variables so i just write here qualitative so in qualitative variables uh, like the variables which are which cannot be expressed in numbers there are many variables which cannot be expressed in numbers like for example uh, if your name is ajay you cannot write your name in number i hope you understand that so name for example name for example company right if the name of the company is reliance you cannot uh, uh, put it into the name so these are the different variables uh, which are qualitative in nature and uh, which are basically the string variables and we are having alphabets like we uh, the ajay vijay so we cannot express these names as number like company we have reliance right so we have the sul hdfc so when we have uh, these observations in the data we uh, have to define these variables as the string variables so let me uh, ex explain the these kind of variables so the first variable i am typing the company company right and if i type the company so the type because it, you have to tell the software whether this observation is a number or whether this observation is a alphabet so because i know that this is not a number so i should put the alphabet a string right okay so this is the string variable okay and uh, company and the string uh, now if i uh, you can type the data here let for example the first company is reliance second company is hdfc third company is hul fourth company is uh, any other company you can write uh let's say o n g c right so uh, here we are typing the alphabet so this variable is known as a string variable a string variable right in this case the first uh, uh, name column is the name of the variable what is the variable name A string is the type of the variable so normally we have only two type the string type and the numeric type then this is the width width means how many alphabet you have in in the word like for example uh, the reliance reliance is having uh, eight words so it is a perfect but if i have some big name then the software will take only the eight characters like for example uh, i am just uh, uh, finding out okay i just want to type ambuja cement ambuja so you can see that after this even i am typing this software is not taking any input why because ambuja c so eight characters are complete if i want to type more characters i have to uh, change this so if i change to a 10 now if i i can type here ambuja c ment m e one two more right because earlier it was 8 now it is 10 so i can i can type 10 alphabet so accordingly you can decide what is the what should be the width of the this so now uh, i have 14 so i can type some more ambuja c ment right so in this way if we can define that how many if i go to variable view i can define that how many alphabet i require decimal i hope you understand that how many decimal i need sometimes i need two decimal sometimes i don't need any decimal so it depends upon the uh, the requirement because if you are working with the uh, let's suppose uh, exchange rate you know that how many rupees are there in the one dollar 
so when you are dealing with the exchange rate there is a habit of reporting three four decimals so it depends upon the uh, requirement that how many decimals you you need okay <clears throat> now uh, after that level 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 means what is the meaning of the level level means the explanation of the variable sometimes uh, we put the variable name in short and we explain the variable here like uh, this is the company name so company name is the level level is the explanation of the variable and whenever you uh, apply any analysis the output the level name will come in the output so so we design that what we exactly require in the output accordingly we can uh, decide the level okay now we are having the values this value is very important i will tell you because here uh, value will not work value will work when you want to provide the code like if you have the data of male you can write one if you have the data of female you can write two so sometimes we assign the values to the different categories like one means male two means female and uh, like that so we you have to define that what is the meaning of one and two so i will tell you in the next example okay missing value uh, normally in the data set we don't have missing value so uh, uh, try to try to collect the data in such a way you should not have any missing value because dealing with the missing value is a very complicated thing column width column width means how many columns what is the width you can this is the width column width right so how many width you require in the uh, data set like for example this is this is the width so we can increase the width we can decrease the width as per our requirement then we are having the alignment so alignment may be left alignment or right alignment you can decide your alignment very easily normally we should uh, keep the alignment as a left because uh, uh, as a experience as a long experience i can tell you uh, we normally keep the alignment left because it helps in the data management <coughs> then we are having the measure so we are having uh, three me three measures here nominal ordinal and scale so i will explain uh, these three measures to you don't worry and uh, the last column is the input column and the target column if you see this column if you click on that there are different options like input and target so we only use input and target input means independent variable and suppose you have some dependent variable you can define that as a target variable but uh, uh, this is possible in few of the uh, analysis in most of the cases we will not use this input and target okay now my second kind of variable is the uh, nominal variables so i am going to explain you first what is the nominal variables and then i will explain i will how i will uh, insert or i will use these kind of variables okay so let me tell you the nominal variables first so second kind of variables is the is my nominal variables and the nominal variables are also known as uh, categorical variables categorical variables so uh, categorical nominal variables and categoricals are the same and uh, uh, what is the property of this nominal variable the basic property of these nominal variables are, is that you cannot apply any of the mathematical operator like you cannot plus use plus you cannot use minus you cannot use multiply or divide even you cannot use greater than you cannot use equal to or less than so any of the operator is not applicable in the nominal variables now i am giving you the example let's say i i say that one is representing the male and two is representing the female so they are the uh, independent groups now my question is that can you say 
वन प्लस टू इज इक्वल टू थ्री कैन यू से वन इज लेस देन टू कैन यू से वन माइनस टू इज इक्वल टू माइनस वन राइट और कैन यू से टू डिवाइडेड बाई वन इज इक्वल टू टू सो एनी ऑफ दी ऑपरेटर विल नॉट वर्क हेयर नो ऑपरेटर विल वर्क हेयर सो दीज ऑपरेटर्स आर नॉट अलाउड टू अप्लाई ऑन दी नॉमिनल वेरेबल्स सो इन दिस केस वन इज ओनली रिप्रेजेंटिंग वन कैटेगरी एंड टू इज रिप्रेजेंटिंग अदर कैटेगरी so this kind of variable is known as nominal variables so i am giving you some more examples of the nominal variable and you can use your common sense to uh, decide can i apply plus minus all these things to these variables let uh, giving some more example now you you can see that there uh, there is another variable called uh, age group because a lot of people have the uh, confusion whether the age group is a nominal variable or not so let's suppose i say that less than 25 then i decide 25 to uh, 40 then 40 to 50 55 let's say and more than 55 so this is called the this is called age group and i am defining that one is this two is this three is this four is this now can can you say uh 3 minus 2 is equal to 1 4 divided by 2 equal to 2 or you can you say these this group is double than this group no actually uh, you can you can think but practically we cannot we cannot apply any of the mathematical sign also here because one represent a group category two represent another category three represents another category so when the number when the number represents only the categories then this variable is known as nominal variables right so let me uh, create some nominal variables here in the data set uh, the first variable is the gender and uh, this is numeric this should be numeric anything which is represented by numbers should be numeric this is one thing and in spss 99% of the variables should be numeric width i require Eight because one and two we have to use. I think there is no requirement of the decimal also. And this is the uh, gender. And here the values will come. One, if you okay, if you click on this option, you can have the option of defining. So one means males, not male, male. and two means female and you just click okay and you have the value so this variable is defined and in measure you have to define that this is a nominal variable this is a nominal variable one more nominal let's take one more nominal variable and uh, let's take income group or education background education it is a numeric no decimal is required and uh, i put here edu in detail education back ground and in education background <coughs> the uh, suppose one means uh, btech background and uh, two means msc this is just for example so i will not cover all i will just cover three or four mba and uh, four is suppose this is the background of the respondent <coughs> ma and five m com so this is these are just 
the examples and this is also a nominal variable because all the numbers are representing just categories and then we can go to the data set to define the number like for example when you put the gender so you have to put like one and two so you have to put like these numbers one two one two so i just uh, randomly putting 30 observations so that we can do some analysis on on that in education i have five options so i am taking one to five So we have 30 observations for just demonstration. In this way, you can fill the data. The variable name come here. And in data view, you can go to fill the data set. Okay. So gender and education are my nominal variables. And I hope there is no confusion in uh, confusion about that. Why they are nominal variables? Because we cannot apply any of the mathematical operator. And the number here only represents the category. The number here only represents the category. So that's why this is the nominal variable. Now, second kind of variable is known as ordinal, ordinal variables. So let me explain you first what is ordinal variables and then we will take some example. The second category of data is ordinal. Ordinal data. In ordinal data, the, uh, this we call it ranking. Ranking data. So anywhere, if you can apply the ranking, Right. Then you can say it is an ordinal data. For example, can we say that the uh, distinction? So I hope you understand what is this distinction. Distinction is better than the first division. And the first division is better than second division. And second division is better than fail. So this order we can apply here. Distinction is better than first division. First division is better than uh, second division. Second division is better than third division and it is better than failure. So we can use greater than sign here. So in ordinal variables, you can apply greater than, you can apply equal to, or you can apply less than. Only that. You cannot go beyond this. So if you apply only this, uh, designation this greater than less than equal to then this is known as ordinal variables and this data is known as ordinal data now i'm uh, giving you one more example suppose if i ask you that uh, you are interested in buying a mobile phone and i'm asking you which is your preference like you want to buy apple phone or you want to you want to buy Nokia, Samsung, like this, and you say that Apple is my first preference, Nokia is my third preference, and Samsung is my second preference. So here I can say the one is better than three, and uh, Two is also better than three, uh, right? So now why I'm using greater than here? The greater means the first option is preferred, preferable, or better as compared to second option, right? So we can compare the options. Then Apple is my first option, first preference. So here one is more stronger as compared to three, because one means the first preference. And two means the second preference. Second preference is also better than third preference. First preference is better than second preference. So when you when you can arrange the numbers into the descending or ascending order, 
order some order is there right uh, f- for example in a university there are many colleges and uh, in, in the application form you have to tell the university that this is my first preference first choice second choice third choice so uh, this choice is also a ordinal data right so let me uh, take the examples of some uh, data let's say i am creating a variable preference preference or this is for preference for mobile phone or preference of let's say car here i am saying that the one there are different options one means first preference and uh, here two means second preference and the three means third preference okay after this you have to tell uh, for what you are asking for the preference let's say uh, i have three three choices uh, hyundai and let me copy it and uh, the second preference is for maruti and the third preference i am asking because the respondent give the answer of each option so here each option will be the variable and the third option is uh, basically let's uh, i take the example of uh, tata tata right so i i should write here preference underscore hyundai because variable name can be in short preference of the maruti and here i am typing the preference of tata right this is the uh, option this is the way we collect the data set and let me copy here so you can see that you can copy also copy and paste in x as spaces also this variable is known as the ordinal data right so here preference is ordinal data we can say one is better than second second is better than three so now how we fill the data here let's say i take this the first preference for hyundai second preference for maruti third preference for this so you will have this kind of data set i just uh, put the random data so that you understand that how we put the data and you can you can see here any number should not repeat right so this is the way we put the data here yeah so let me copy this for saving the time so we are having this kind of data set yeah this data is is an example of the ordinal data set so now i am showing you the uh, third kind of data set which is known as interval data interval data the third is the third kind of category of the data is interval data we call it interval scale basically if you want to analyze the perception or the attitude of the respondents then you will use this kind of interval scale for example if i ask you that uh, what is your weight 
you can tell me your weight like i am 60 60 kg i am my weight is 75 kg right so uh, these kind of variables cannot be measured with the interval scale but interval scale will use like if i ask you that uh, do you are you satisfied with your car so in this case you cannot tell me that uh, yes i i am 30 kg satisfied i am 20 kg satisfied i am 30 meter satisfied i am 40 meter satisfied so there is no unit of it there are many variables where there is no unit right satisfaction is having no unit quality is having no unit if you go to a restaurant and uh, somebody ask you sir how you like the food you cannot say yeah i like 10 kg food i like 20 meter food so there is no unit of the quality and your attitude is very important here so we are we we will ask you like that suppose in the scale of 1 2 3 4 5 so rate the quality of food where one means strongly disagree disagree neutral agree and strongly agree so you uh, this is the this is the way we ask the perception or the attitude and because some of you maybe are faculty members and the feedback of the faculty members is provided by the uh, taken by a, with the help of a questionnaire and that questionnaire may be the perfect example of the interval scale because a student will take tick on like uh, four you can somebody tick on five somebody tick on three somebody tick on two right so uh, this is this is an example of interval skill and uh, i am giving you another another example like suppose you want to measure the uh, whether whether your customer will buy your product or not right or uh, you are asking in this way like uh, are you interested in buying your product or would you, are you, you like the product or not okay so you like the product or not uh, and there are different choices you provided to the customer 1 2 3 4 5 5 and uh, one means do not like at all and not like means yeah i like this product extremely so the customer have the option of giving a tick in any of the option he can tick on this he can tick on this so motivation satisfaction quality all these are the variables which can be measured with the help of interval scale in india this interval scale is very popular and uh, interval scale can be have can be available for different types like you can also use seven point scale 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so if you measure the variable on seven point scale this is also an example of interval scale and in the interval scale you can apply all the operations except the ratio like for example here you cannot you cannot say that 6 upon 3 is equal to 3 this is the problem in likert scale that division is not possible otherwise you can apply all the uh, all the measures you can apply plus you can apply minus here you can say 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 yeah you can say that and 4 minus 3 is equal to 2 you can also say that because the name of this scale is interval scale interval scale means the gap between 1 and 2 is equal to 2 and 3 and equal to 3 and 4 so this gap is same throughout the scale so i will um, show some of these scales to you and i hope uh, you yourself are using the questionnaire and in the questionnaire the five point scale or seven point scale are very common so all these seven point scale five point scale are treated as interval scale for the point of analysis however in the books it is mentioned that they are ordinal scales but uh, in research in statistics we take them as a interval scale like i am giving you a satisfaction satisfaction is one of the example of the interval scale another example is quality so i am taking two variables here to demonstrate how we feed the data so here we put 
satisfaction of the uh, customer and the description of quality is the perceived quality of the product perceived quality right so let me uh, take this description and here in satisfaction one means uh, highly dissatisfied because we always start from the most negative to the most positive so one means highly dissatisfied uh, and uh, two means dissatisfied okay and three means neither satisfied nor okay let me type here neither dissatisfied nor satisfied then fourth means satisfied and the, in the last we will type five that highly satisfied okay so similarly we can define here one means a uh, poor quality or we can extremely poor extremely poor quality so we always start from the negative side and it is a simply poor and uh, the three means okay and four means good quality and five means a uh, very good extremely extremely good so this is an example of the interval scale and then we can go to the data and uh, now i can start putting the the responses like this similarly i can put my responses here the reason is that we have to apply the different descriptive analysis on the data set okay so in this way we are developing the data set and uh, we are defining the different kind of variables also the last variable so i defined you the nominal data i defined you the ordinal data interval scale data in the last i am going to define you the ratio data the fourth kind of data is known as the ratio data now ratio scale we call it ratio scale so what is the meaning of the ratio scale ratio scale is simply when the ratio of two variables it means you can apply plus minus multiply divide and uh, greater than less than equal to so you can apply all the parameters on this kind of data set and this is the higher order data set like if i have the data of age weight price income right all these data set are all the variables are the example of the ratio data for example if somebody is 44 years old and somebody is 22 years old you can say that the mr a is twice as uh, mr b so here the ratio is meaningful and second property is of the ratio scale is that they already have the ready made unit age is measured in years weight is measured in kg price is in rupees income is in rupees right so ratio scale is having clear unit and the ratio is meaningful you can apply all the statistics on the ratio scale so the simplest ratio scale i am taking here is the income which we measure in rupees and uh, we can yeah we can ask income in two ways we can ask in categories and we can we can ask in the amount also so let me ask income and uh, this is the monthly income of the people uh, so i put one monthly income and in the last i just want to describe their measure 
so income is a scale and uh, quality is also a scale this is also a scale and it is uh, data okay this is a ordinal and this is also a ordinal variable hyundai is also ordinal and then education is a nominal now we now the software know that which kind of variable is every variable we define the type of the variable Three nominal, three ordinal, three scale. Interval and ratio comes in uh, both scale category, and we define values each and everything. Yeah. So now my data is over. Uh, we are having a ready okay sample uh, income we should have. So let me put some income like twenty five thousand. So I am just putting the uh, values here. these are the hypothetical random values just to apply the statistics on it and this hands on practice will help you in understanding the software in a easy way and i hope you will apply uh, all these commands in case you require the software i can tell you the uh, link where you can download the software very easily okay so i fill some of the data set and some of the data set i will copy now we are we have a sample data set and we are going to explain everything uh, basic statistics in it now before that before moving to the uh, next step i just want to know that whether are you are you getting the concepts or not are you with me are you uh, is this explanation is helpful for you or if you have any problem please write uh, type in the chat box so that i can answer your queries and uh, up to this level i just explain you how to use the software how to feed the data set and uh, because how to generate the variables how to feed the data set this is very important for the uh, all coming to sessions so if any problem is there you can type otherwise just say yes it means you are with me and understanding the concepts so okay i think you are understanding the concept it's clear so we can move further good and uh, uh, now i will use this option called analyze this is a option called analyze and i am having a ready ready simple data and uh, this is simple data set simple math going to analyze so first analysis which i am going to do okay so uh, usha rani ma'am is asking that uh, the concept of scale need to be repeated i explained four type of scales the first type of scale is a nominal scale where we put only the categories the second type of scale is the uh, scale ordinal scale where we put only the order preferences the third kind of scale is the uh, attitude measurement scale which you and which you measure with the help of five point scale or seven point scale and the last is ratio ratio means which is the okay let me uh, brief briefly explain you all these scales so that uh, there will be not any not a confusion in this i just make a summary of all these skills so we have just we have discussed the four kind of skills and uh, a brief example i am giving to you this is a scale and this is operator 
so first scale is is a nominal scale and we can we cannot apply any of the operator here and this is scale is known as also known as category so we are having only the category here the second kind of scale is known as ordinal scale and we can use greater than equal to or less than and this scale is known as ranking then third we are having the interval and uh, in interval we can apply greater than uh, minus plus less than all except so we can apply all because in, in statistics frankly speaking the ratio and uh, interval are clubbed together so uh, frankly speaking in from in because in in the statistics we combine this kind of we combine ratio and interval so uh, there is no difference between the interval and ratio from a statistics point of view only thing is that the interval scale is measured with the help of uh, 1 to 5 scale 1 to 7 scale this is this scale is known as rating scale and finally we are having the ratio scale but statistics point of view both are same right whatever test you can apply on the interval data you can also apply on the ratio data whatever test you can apply on the ratio data you can also apply on the interval data so most of the tests you can apply on both interval and ratio so i explained you this uh, simple concept and show you the data how to create the data for each and now let me go to the analysis okay uh if you go to the analyze the first option we are having the descriptive then you go to the frequencies so first of all i am going to explain how to uh, how to analyze the this nominal data we are having the gender and education as nominal data right and we are interested in making the charts because charts are very important in uh, in nominal data set only these two command i am giving to you and if you click okay output will come <clears throat> and the output will show you that uh, okay now you can see you can see there are 14 males in the data set there are 16 females in the data set and uh, 46% of the population or, or the sample 46% of the sample is male 53.3% of the uh, observations respondents are female this concept is called frequency distribution and frequency distribution is one of the thing which you normally reported in the papers as well as in the thesis like here we can say that uh, the 16% 16.7% of the respondent are having the btech degree uh, 16.7% are msc 23% are mba 30% are ma and 13% are mcom so this analysis is basically known as the uh, frequency distribution analysis and uh, we can also make the graph like this make these are the different graphs we can make in spss and let me show you some more uh, options that we have again go to the analyze descriptive go to the frequencies and uh, send the two variables here in charts now let's make the pie chart and uh, just click okay so after that you can see the pie charts so you can also make the pie charts in the uh, in the in the this is they are colorful and beautiful and uh, also let's do it one once again go to analyze descriptive and go to frequencies and charts now we are going to make the histograms uh, normal curve we don't require here okay so now we will get the histograms right so similarly we can make the charts and frequency distribution uh, from the data 
and now i'm telling you the cross tabulation which is one of the important analysis we can do on the nominal data so let me go to the analyze descriptive statistics and i am going to the cross tabulation the fourth option and believe me this cross tabulation is very important table uh, especially in the industry this cross tabulation is very important and uh, how to make it for making the cross tabulation this is the command you just click on the cross tabulation and after that one category you have to take on the first row and second category you can take on the column so normally uh, gender is having only two values male and female so we can take here and education background is having three or four values five values we can take here so one variable one nominal variable go to the row column row window and second will go to the column window and now you can click okay so you are having a table let me show you the table this table is known as this table is known as the cross tabulation right so what this table is telling you this table is telling you that there are 14 male in the data set and out of the 14 male three have um, uh, btech background nobody is msc and five is mba four respondent have the ma background mcom is uh, two only two people are having mcom degree similarly out of 16 females two are btech five are msc three are mba four are ma two are mcom like this right <clears throat> so we have um, we have this example to report the cross tabulation of the uh, demo, nominal variables right so i hope this is uh, easy thing to represent the data like that data like this and uh, let me do one more thing i want to create one more variable so that i can show you the second layer cross tab now in this example i have a another variable called income and i want to make the income groups from this income because normally we divide the income into income group so i am telling you that how to make the group from here right so let me uh, report the distribution first so i go to analyze descriptive descriptive frequency if i click on the reset every will go back to their position i am taking the monthly income <clears throat> and monthly income i am just i want to just make the chart of it and uh, now you can see you can see the chart of the monthly income now i i am looking this chart because i <clears throat> i want to see in which group i can i can divide the monthly income so let's say this is 20000 to 40000 40000 to 60000 and 60000 above so here it seems that i can make three groups up to 40000 then 42 uh, 60000 and 60 plus <clears throat> so i can uh, make this kind of group but the question is that how to make this kind of group how to convert the income into the income group so the answer is very easy i am telling you the way how to do that you can see a variable called transform so all the transformation is available here transform i am op uh, opting a uh, option here record into the different variables so this is the option i am going to select and uh, i want to convert the monthly income so i am taking the income here and i want to create a new variable that is called category so now this cat means category of income this this will be the name of the new variable and uh, let's transform it with the help of old and new values now see carefully i am selecting that lowest to 20000 ne 
lowest means from the low value lowest value to 40000 i want to give 1 the new value is 1 old value is from the lowest to the 40000 the new value is 1 so you can see that lowest to 40000 it is now 1 then i am giving 40000 to 60000 but 40000 is counted in first option here exactly 40000 will not be counted 40000 1 rupee beyond that it is counted so from 40000 to 60000 i am assigning the value to add then i am going here so i am saying that 60000 and plus 60000 and more i am defining here 3 so 60000 through highest it is 3 after this after this command a new variable will come let me continue and new variable I, if i click on the change so now income will be converted into the category income and just click ok so let me see this variable yes this variable is there but i have to define their values so this is let me income i, I call it income group and here one, what is one one means less than uh, 40000 rupees 40000 you have to define manually the coding second means the uh, for, uh, rupees 40000 to rupees 60000 and the third category is more than 60000 so i defined the category i defined the income group level income now i want to add this into the cross tabulation let me go to the analyze descriptive explore and uh, now i want to first gender and then i want to see the income group income group okay i think uh, it is wrong command I just go to the cross tabulation. Uh, education, I am sending back. Income group, I am taking in. And I want to see the cross tabulation between the gender and the income group. Let me click OK. So you can see that uh, there are 14 males in the uh, group. Out of 10, out of them, 10 is having the income less than 40,000 nobody is from this group and four belong to the having the income more than 60000 similarly there are 16 uh, females out of that five females have the income less than 40000 and four is having the income 40000 to 60000 like this right now uh, my question is that can we include all the three variables gender education and income in one one table answer is yes very easy uh, go to analyze go to descriptive go to explore and sorry cross tabulation now what i should do i should the most important basic into the layer education i should put in the row and income i should put in the column so you can go up to the maximum of uh, three layer and click OK. Now the table which you are getting is like this. OK, I hope there is no problem in understanding this. Let me explain you. Uh, let's explain for the male. In male, there are three BTEC, four MBA, five MA and two MCOM. And uh, two BTEC have the salary of 40,000. One BTEC is having salary of 60,000, more than 60,000. Out of the four MBA, which are males, three have income less than 40,000. And one have income more than 60,000. Right. Similarly, you can understand the meaning of each line. Like in case of female, 
there are there are five female for example who are having the education background of msc three are having income less than 40000 one uh, female have the income between 40000 to 60000 there is no female having income more than 60 lakhs thousand so this type of cross tabulation is quite popular in in the thesis and the, and i hope now there will not be any problem in designing these kind of cross tabulations so you can also make the graph of these cross tabulations but that is quite complicated uh, let me show you the way you go to analyze and uh, go to the cross tab same command you just click on the display cluster bar charts right display cluster bar chart let me click on this also after that you can see the uh, chart will come yeah this kind of chart will come and uh, you can present these charts like for example when the gender is a male and when the gender is a female so you can put these two charts here when gender is a male and when gender is a female right so these charts you can you can also make and report so this is the basic analysis in the data set which we can apply on the nominal variables only similarly uh, we can make the uh, ordinal variables also like my ordinal variables is now preferences so this is the preferences and i want to make the chart of the preferences like uh, i want to make uh, bar chart let's say and go to okay so you can see that uh, in hyundai 40% of the people are giving the first preference 50% of the people are giving second preference on only third 10% of the customers are giving preference of third preference similarly let's go to the uh, next preference of tata like for example 33 given first preference 13% second preference and 46 most of them are putting tata in the third preference and the graph is coming like this so this graph will tell you uh, how many people giving first preference i think this is for first uh, no preference of hyundai so how much first preference is coming for hyundai second preference of hyundai third preference of hyundai so you can see that uh, most of the people have put hyundai as a second preference and maruti 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 third preference very high second preference first preference right and then you can you can see in case of tata of galti se yahan pe actually by mistake four is also there although this four should not be there uh, the first preference is this second preference is this and third preference is also this so we can analyze the preferences like this of the different products and uh, by mistake i put four yeah i think this is the four no uh, maruti yeah this is four by mistake it is four let put it one here and make the graph again now let me try pie chart here and okay so you can see that uh, uh, the preferences can also be reported with the help of pie chart uh, still we are having some four here problem but uh, in this case there is no problem so you most mostly is red red you can see that the portion of the red is high second preference are more now i am uh, telling you three things uh, in scale data the three imp uh, analysis are important let me write three analysis which we are very which are very popular so three analysis for scale data 
नंबर वन सेंट्रल टेंडेंसी वी रिपोर्ट द सेंट्रल टेंडेंसी लाइक मीन मीडियन एंड मोड एंड देन वी हैव सेकंड प्रॉपर्टी दैट इज कॉल्ड डिस्पर्शन तो डिस्पर्शन लाइक स्टैंडर्ड एविशन एंड द वेरिएंस and the third property is distribution distribution all the three properties are very important in distribution we reported the skewness skewness kurtosis like this so now i am going to tell you that how to analyze the central tendency how to analyze the dispersion and how to analyze the distribution uh it's they are very easy to calculate from here let me go to the uh, analyze descriptive frequencies but remember one thing you cannot include nominal data and the ordinal data for this kind of analysis we can only take the uh, satisfaction interval scale and the ratio scale so we are having three variables in the data set like satisfaction quality and monthly income as a ratio scale and the interval scale and go to the statistics here and this is you can see this is a box for central tendency this is a box for the distribution and this is a box for the dispersion if you click on the mean median mode you can calculate the central tendency of the variables by clicking on the standard deviation minimum value maximum value variance and range you can find out the you can analyze the dispersion of the variables and skewness and kurtosis are for the distribution part so let's click it and remove this because frequency distribution we don't want to see and click okay now you can see that all of the analysis you are having here so in this in this data uh we can we can have this uh, mean average satisfaction is 4 median is 4 and mode is 4 standard deviation is 0.85 variance is 0.823 minimum value is 2 maximum value is 5 and skewness is minus 0.584 skewness kurtosis is minus 0.494 and skewness is 0.427 so calculating all the values you can in spss you can see is very simple hardly it will take one minute to calculate all the values now i think uh, there is no uh, need to explain what is mean what is median what is mode these are very basic things uh, one thing which may be new to you is skewness and kurtosis which i am just going to explain you uh, what is skewness and what is kurtosis basically uh, we assume that this kind of shape is as a normal distribution this is a bell shaped bell shaped curve and uh, in in a bell shaped curve this distribution is called normal distribution and uh, in normal distribution the mean the median and the mode are exactly the same so they are same but if we if i make the plot like this or if i make the plot like this so in this case the distribution is not normal this distribution is called negative uh, negatively skewed distribution this distribution is called negative skewed distribution this distribution is called positively skewed distribution right so negative is skewed and positive is skewed we have like this so let me uh, make in a different chart so this distribution is basically called negative distribution why it is called negative distribution because in this case the mean and mode minus mean mean and mode is negative mode here is more than mean so mean minus mode is negative so that's why this distribution is called ne uh, negative 
skewed distribution negative skewed distribution similarly similarly we have the positive skewed distribution let me show you that uh, this distribution is called positive distribution positively skewed distribution positively skewed here mode he is here mode means the frequency highest frequency and mean is here in this case because mean is greater than mode so mean minus mode is positive so it means this distribution is a positively skewed distribution so uh, the, i hope you now understand what is the meaning of positive skewness what is the meaning of negative skewness and after that i am going to explain you what is the meaning of kurtosis kurtosis right uh, basically sometimes we are having this kind of distribution and this is a normal distribution so in a normal distribution then the peak is normal this peak it is actually the called peak the it is symmetrical graph this is also bell shaped this is also a bell shaped but here the bell is having high high peak right so it is called high peak right and sometimes we are having this kind of also the where peak is low low peak right so what is common in all the graphs all the graphs are symmetrical all the graphs are symmetrical but they have the different peak so if the peak is normal we call it meso mesocortic mesocortic means normal 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 peak normal distribution high peak we call it leptocortic 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 peak means most of the respondent are giving you the same answer so that's why the peak is high and this peak is representing you the uh, similarity of the answer provided by different respondents called leptocortic and it is also it, it is positive kurtosis also leptocortic is also known as positive kurtosis similarly if you have a lot of variety lot of variation in the data set right you can see that uh, there is a lot of variation in the data set because of which you have the low peak and low peak is known as negative kurtosis negative kurtosis so uh, this is the concept of the skewness and the kurtosis and you, let's see the data set so kurtosis you can see it is negative so it means a variation is very high in this data set here it is positive it means variation is low and here it is also negative so variation is very high so in monthly income variation is very high in uh, this satisfaction variation is also high but in uh, in this case the variation is low and similarly if you see the skewness this is negatively skewed negatively skewed negatively skewed means you are having high uh, this kind of data set means most of the respondent are giving you the higher side responses and in monthly income lower side responses are there so this is the meaning of uh, skewness and kurtosis and in the research in the research in all the research in all the research the skewness plus kurtosis whatever be the sign should be less than 1 i am telling you the uh, this because most of you mo most of you will face this problem of normal normality the skewness and kurtosis should be less than 1 for a good data set because this is the property of the data set so uh, whenever you collect the data so collect the data in such a way that the chances of skewness and kurtosis should be less than 1 then you can say that my data is free from the normality problem and uh, i can apply all the parametric test in the data set right so finally i am going to tell you the last test which is called test of the normality uh, 
there is a, a important test which is known as the shapiro will test just see the command analyze descriptive and explore and uh, we want to i want to check whether monthly income is normally distributed or not i just go to the plot you can see the plot there is a option called normality plot with test and the histogram uncheck stem of leaf click on the histogram normality plot with test and okay and just run it so here you can oh. see that uh, there is a plot and this plot is nowhere near to the normal curve so the uh, answer of shapiro will test and colmo group test here you need to note two things one is that uh, let me explain you one is that what is the null hypothesis that normal distribution exist normal distribution exist and if this p value if the pre p value is less than 0.05 null hypothesis rejected so only two things are uh, you should have clarity on this two things if the pre p value is less than 0.05 0.05 it means your distribution is not normal right but this is very a hard test of normality in most of the cases you will it is very difficult to get the probability value more than 0.05 right so we uh, give more focus on skewness and kurtosis they should be less than 1 so here we are having a problem on kurtosis which is more than 1 in most of the cases we should have skewness and kurtosis less than 1 so if you can if you are able to manage the data where skewness and kurtosis is less than 1 then there, is, there there will not be any problem in the analysis you can directly apply parametric test in the data so uh, this is my presentation for today and just uh, wait for uh, one minute <clears throat> okay now i am going to take some of the queries uh, few queries i will take now you can put you, you can uh, the organizers can mute unmute some of the uh, participants and can so that they can ask some of the queries okay sir yeah they can unmute themselves sir no problem if uh, you have any questions or queries kindly ask directly to the resource person thank you sir this is shomoy mujumda yes sir uh, i am asking that uh, can you analyze ordinal and nominal data at the same time or it should be done separately sir uh, basically when we talk about the analysis right yeah uh, we keep ordinal data in one time a nominal data in one time separately so we should not do uh, the uh, same analysis at the same time we cannot that means we cannot no, do we, we can we can do software yeah. will not deny to uh, giving you the output but the but problem is that uh, ideally we should not do it we should analyze the nominal variable separately we should analyze the ordinal variable separately ideally we should not club them ideally okay thank you sir yeah thank you any query okay thank you sir for your <laughs> for your nice presentation really it will uh, it is a very impactful and applied presentation uh, for the beginners of spss so we are very happy to get such type of presentation hope in the coming days we will get more 
uh, <laughs> more things to learn. Thank you, sir. Uh, okay, see you tomorrow, Thank sir. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you all the participants for your presence and active participation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much.